Hello and welcome to my talk, A Trip to the Planetarium, the full experience. My name is Matthias Jäger. I'm the technical and scientific lead of the Planetarium Mannheim in Germany. A hundred years ago, the first artificial stars were projected in the planetarium in Jena. But the stars were just the beginning. In the last century, the planetariums changed drastically, opened up to other sciences, cultural events, music festivals, and much more. But one thing remained. The fascination of the visitors to the crystal clear night sky projected to the dome. A night sky many never experienced on their own as the nights became way too bright for the stars to be visible in many parts of the world. As such, the planetarium is the ideal medium to transfer astronomical knowledge to the general public. A medium and way of transportation our science, many other natural sciences are jealous about. More than 4,000 planetariums exist worldwide today, with millions of visitors per year. Among them, many school children of all ages, whose teachers want to use the planetarium and the expertise of the people working in them as an engaging way to increase the fascination for the students to astronomy. However, a visit to a planetarium can be much more than watching an immersive video on the dome or watching the, star, the stars on the dome. It can be a life-changing learning experience, which leaves the students in awe. The Planetarium Mannheim hosts more than 15,000 students a year, from age 6 to 19. Recently, we changed the way how we approach the students in our planetarium. We moved away from the classical planetarium show, where we as a presenter just talk into the darkness to a more interactive approach. But this approach starts way before the students and their teachers actually come to the planetarium. The first thing we wanted to create for the students and their teachers was material so that they can increase the knowledge about this topic they are about to listen beforehand. So we have material on our web page which gives both background information on the topics of the shows we provide as well as um, classroom activities which the teachers and the students can do afterwards. The most important change, however, was the way how we present our live presentations. In the past, as I said, it was a one-way communication in the dome. The presenter was giving his talk and by the end of the show the light went on, the teachers and their students left the dome and that's it. Now we have created age-adapted interactive presentations. We raise questions to the audience, we make jokes and we test the knowledge of the children which are with us in the dome. We adapt the information we present to the students to the age of the students in the dome, which also means that we have to present in very different ways depending on the age of the students we have. This is not always easy. The Planetarium Mannheim has 220 seats, which means that sometimes we have up to eight different classes in our dome which enjoy the same show. These kids come not only from different schools, but also from di different backgrounds, have different background knowledge, have different teachers, which may have taught them something about astronomy beforehand and maybe not. This means we have a very inhomogeneous group of people, which I all have to entertain at the same time with the same presentation. At the same time, as we all know, a planetarium is very, very dark. I have no way of seeing the audience. The same issue I have when I give this presentation here. I have no idea if I still engage with the students or if they are bored and wandering around with their thoughts. The only way I can interact with them is by hearing. The issue is, if I hear that the students are getting too loud, it's most often too late. They are too bored or no longer engaged with my talk. As the planetarium is so large, I also have no idea to identify troublemakers early on, even if I hear them. The dome is just too huge, I cannot leave my post as a presenter, and even if I could, it would be hard to find troublemakers in the darkness. So it's really very hard to engage with the students in a direct approach. The advantage of having a big dome, on the other hand, is of course that we can create huge numbers of students, which is important for stakeholders. They are, more, they are more interested in the big numbers and less in smaller groups. On top, a big dome also creates a more immersive experience than a small dome could. A small dome, on the other hand, has of course the advantage that most often they only host one or two classes at the same time. So I know my audience much better 
I have a more homogeneous group and the people, both students and teachers, are much closer to me, physically and mentally. Also, more interactions are possible because I have a smaller group. On the contra side, for a small planetarium, are of course the smaller numbers. At the same time, where we at the Planetarium Mannheim can host up to a thousand kids in a day, it's impossible to do this with a dome, which can only fit 30 at a time. For me as a presenter, therefore, it's very important that I meet the students and the teachers beforehand. That doesn't mean that I have to go to their schools, but that I meet them, for example, in the foyer. This way, I get an idea of how the students are, if they're super engaged, if they're bored, how are the teachers, and of course also the students have a chance to meet me as their presenter. They can ask me the first questions, they get an idea of the rules which will be in place for the next hour. Personally, I think this is a very important part of the planetarium experience. After the engaging show, where I try to raise as many questions and interact as much as possible with the students, an important other aspect of the planetarium experience is the possibility for the students that they ask questions. It's a very rare opportunity for the students that they have the chance to interact with the scientists and an astronomer in particular. Also during the Q&A sessions, the students have a chance to ask questions which weren't answered during the presentation and they also can ask questions about topics they didn't understand well enough, which again gives me as a presenter enough feedback to change the show accordingly and make it better the next time. There is also a contra side, of course. For students who are not that interested in astronomy, it can be quite boring afterwards. And as such, they will chat, they will start to chit chat and it will get noisy in the dome. You will have a lot of background noise. On top, from my experience, especially with younger kids, you will get a lot of questions and it will be impossible to answer all of them due to time restrictions. But again, we developed another format here. We gave the students and their teacher a chance to submit all the questions which couldn't be answered in the dome electronically afterwards. This way, students and their teacher, who are also very afraid of raising questions in the dome in front of the students, can submit questions to the planetarium and I, as a trained astronomer, will answer them to my best knowledge. The biggest issue we faced is that we have limited personnel which is able and willing to perform these interactive shows. As such, personnel is a highly limiting factor in the number of shows we can offer here. At the moment, we have basically only three people, all full-time staff, which can do these kind of presentations and all feel comfortable doing them. Training additional presenters doing this kind of stuff is very, very time consuming and currently not possible in the near future. After about an hour, the show has ended, the Q&A session is over and the students will start to leave the dome. Now what? Well, for some of them, it was hopefully the life-changing experience we hope to make it for them. What do we do with them? They are now eager to learn more about astronomy. And here comes the last part of the full planetarium experience. In giving an interactive show, you reach a lot of people with different backgrounds, with different interests. But now you have to focus on the people who are really, really interested in astronomy and natural sciences. At the Planetarium Mannheim, we therefore created a group called the Astro Scouts. They are teenagers aged 12 to 16 who are taught basic astronomy, but, and this is the most important aspect, on how to use telescopes, both solar telescopes and night sky observation telescopes. With this background, they are encouraged to go out, reach other students, go to their schools, use the telescopes and bring the fascination of astronomy to other people. Last but not least, we offer plenty of dedicated activities for students in our neighborhood. This includes talks with astronauts or other famous scientists, special events regarding specific topics or if there's something fascinating going on in astronomy or spaceflight. This altogether shows that the planetarium is the perfect place for students of all ages, backgrounds and interests to engage with astronomy. Clear skies.